Jacob. All right, let's dive in. So Job begins with a strange story that takes place up in the heavens, which are described something like a heavenly command center. So God is there with these angelic creatures called the sons of God, and they're all there reporting for duty. And God points out this guy Job, his servant, showing how righteous and good he is. And then one of these angelic creatures approaches. He's referred to in Hebrew as the Satan. The Satan? Who is this? Well, this word is actually a title, which literally means the one who is opposed. So out of this whole crew, he is the one questioning how God is running the world. And he proposes that Job might not actually love God, that he's only a good person because God rewards him. If God were to take away all of the good things he gave to Job, then we would see his true colors. So he thinks Job is just working the system? That's exactly right. Maybe he's obeying just to get what he wants. So God agrees to this experiment and allows the Satan to inflict suffering on Job. And Job loses everyone and everything that he cares about. It is devastating. And remember, he deserves none of this. God himself said so. The remarkable thing is that in the midst of all this suffering, Job still praises God. At least for chapters one and two. But then in chapter three, we find out how he's really feeling inside. He unleashes this poem that reveals his devastation. It's a long, elaborate curse on the day that he was born. After this, some of Job's friends come to visit him to offer their help. And all of them are like, Job, you must have done something horribly wrong to deserve this. After all, we know God is just, and we know the world is ordered by God's justice and fairness, so you must be getting what you deserve. And for the next 34 chapters, the friends and Job go back and forth in very dense Hebrew poetry. His friends keep speculating about why God might have sent such suffering, and they even start making up lists of hypothetical sins that Job must have committed. But after each accusation, Job defends his innocence. And Job is innocent. He is. He's also on an emotional roller coaster. At some moments, he's very confident that God is still wise and just. Yeah, in other moments, he's doubting God's goodness. He even comes to accuse God of being reckless, unfair, and corrupt. So by the end of the dialogue, Job demands that God come and explain himself in person. And God does so. He comes in the form of a great storm cloud. Now, God doesn't give Job a direct answer. He doesn't tell Job about the conversation with the Satan. Yeah, he does something very different. He takes Job on a virtual tour of the universe. He shows Job how grand the world is, and he asks him if he's even capable of running it or understanding it just for a day. He shows Job how much detail there is in the world, things that we might see every day, but really don't understand at all. But God does. He knows it all intimately. He pays attention to the beauty and operations of the universe in ways that we haven't even imagined and in places that we will never see. Then to conclude, God shows Job two wondrous beasts and brags about how great they are. Yeah, they are dangerous. I mean, they would kill you without even thinking about it. And God says they're not evil. They're actually a part of his good world. And then that's it. That's God's whole defense. It's kind of weird. I mean, what was this all about? It seems to be this. From Job's point of view, it looks like God is not just. But God's perspective is infinitely bigger. He's dynamically interacting with a whole universe of complexity when he makes decisions. And this is what God calls his wisdom. So Job asking God to defend himself is actually kind of absurd. He couldn't comprehend this kind of complexity even if he wanted to. So where does this leave us? Well, it leaves Job in a place of humility. He never learned why he suffered, and yet he's able to live in peace and in the fear of the Lord. But that's not where the book ends, because after this, God restores to Job double everything he had lost. And this, again, is surprising. I mean, is this a reward? Is God saying, congratulations, Job, you passed this elaborate test? No. I mean, the whole book just made the point that Job losing everything was not a punishment. And so now getting it back isn't a reward. So why does he get it back? 
Well, apparently, God, in his wisdom, decided to give Job a gift. We don't know why. But what we do know is that Job is now the kind of person who, no matter what comes, good or bad, he can trust God's wisdom. And that's the book of Job. Pink. Uh, so last week, we journeyed with Job through one of the deepest valleys in the history of human brokenness. No? The blessings and the possessions that na acquired niya over the course of his lifetime evaporated in just a day. And not only that, the most sensitive cord ng puso natin as a parent, uh, our love for our children was attacked. And we see that Job lost all of his children in one go. At tapos hindi lang yun, nagkapigsa pa siya all over his body. And as if hindi pa enough yun, dumagdag pa isang, ng, ng isang malaking pigsa yung, yung asawa niya. <laughs> no? The third, the, the, the one person who was supposed to stick with him throughout, through, through take and thin, yung, yung wife niya, sinabihan siya na magbakamatay ka na lang. So we open tonight seeing this guy, Job, as a broken man. And now seeing everything that happened to him, binisita siya ng mga kaibigan niya to comfort him and to help him deal with grief. And speaking of Kaibigan, I want to ask one of my friends, Tita Faye, to read these verses for us. Tita Faye? Good evening. Three of Job's friends heard of all the trouble that had fallen on him. Each traveled from his own country, Eliphaz from Teman, Bildad from Shuha, Zophar from Naamath, and went together to Job to keep him company and comfort him. Job chapter two, verse 11. When they first caught sight of him, they couldn't believe what they saw. They hardly recognized him. They cried out in lament, ripped their robes and dumped dirt on their heads as a sign of their grief. Then they sat with him on the ground. Seven days and nights, they sat there without saying a word. They could see how rotten he felt, how deeply he was suffering. Thank you, Tita Faye. So, makikita natin that these are good friends, no? They love Job. We talked last week about how people leave you when you are no longer in power you know, or you're no longer rich. Pag wala na silang makuha sa'yo. These friends, they saw Job losing everything. So alam natin that they cannot get anything from him now. Pero yet, despite that, they traveled so from far away to comfort him and to mourn with him. So they sat down with him for seven days and seven nights without saying a word. Imagine that, no? And that, my friends, is, is, is true comfort. Tonight, I realize that when you, you comfort people, sometimes you don't even have to say anything. Just put your arms around them, just be near them, let them know that you care. And that is amazing comfort. And many times, that's all you need. In fact, nagumpisa nga yung problema when they began, began to open their mouths. Kaya alam nyo sa totoo lang, mas okay pa talaga if you don't open your mouth at all sometimes. Stop telling people why they are suffering. You know, sometimes we think we are smarter than God and we start giving people reasons. Sometimes we start quoting verses. Alam mo bakit ka nagsasuffer? Itong verse, itong verse, itong verse. At parang ganun ang ginawa na itong mga kaibigan ni Job. After the seven days of silence, they started enumerating reasons kung bakit nangyayari yung mga nangyayari sa kanya. Let me stress again, these are good friends. And they are sincere in their desire to help. Pero we have to realize that being a sincere and good friend doesn't always translate to good advice. 
especially if what you're giving is not godly advice. Alam niyo anong conclusion nila when they open their mouths to to quote unquote comfort Job? And dami nilang sinabi and we don't really have time to go through everything but basically they have the same conclusion. Ano yun? The unrighteous suffer because of their sins while the righteous are rewarded. So basically sinasabi nila kay Job, you are suffering because of your sin. Sabi nila, why don't you just repent? It's as clear as day. I'm sure meron kang matinding kasalanan or there is some hidden sin kaya nangyayari ito sa'yo. Alam niyo, one of the purposes of this book is to point out this false idea, this false, this, this prevalent thinking which thought, thought that, that personal suffering is always the result of personal sin. That God's judgment works in real time. If you are good, God will bless you right away. If you are bad, God will punish you right away. Imagine you know, if this idea is actually how, how, how things operate. No, every day when kung meron kang ginawang maganda, you'd be expecting, come on God, let's go, diba? bring it on, let bring the blessings on. Tapos if you mess up naman, magtago ka na because God is out to get you. Alam niyo yun? And this idea is, was, was held by many people during this time. It was their, their conventional thinking. And this thought process, this idea, this, this theological concept actually still exists in many religions today. Hinduism and Buddhism have that. No? It's called karma. Whatever you do, if you do good, good will come back to you. If you do bad, God will punish you. Guys, anytime you have a teaching that's, or an idea that says that you have to do this in order to deserve that, you better think twice about that because that's not how the God of the Bible works. And it's, it's hard to blame them, no? Because that's how, that's how our human minds work. We are, we are moralistic people. Yeah, it's very easy for us to fall into that, that trap. At alam niyo ba, that same idea was asked by the very disciples of Jesus. They asked, Rabbi, who sent this man or his parents? That he would be born blind. But Jesus answered, it was neither the, the, the man, this man sinned, nor his parents. But it was so that the works of God might be displayed in him. So what can we learn here? Not all suffering is caused by sin. Clear ba tayo dyan? Yes, sin causes pain. In fact, the only reason why there, there is pain and suffering in the, in the world is because of sin. Pinag-usapan natin yan weeks ago, di ba? When we look at how, how sin entered into the world. So sin causes pain many, many times. But not all pain is caused by sin. Okay? And one reason for suffering, according to Jesus, is so that the works of God might be displayed in you. So many, so, so many times we see terrible, evil people, mga mafia, whatever, do a 180 and, 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 and turn, turn to God because of a crisis in their lives. So we, can, so we see that, that God can use that, no? So be careful. Don't be too simplistic in your answer to people's pain and suffering. Because instead of helping this, this so-called advice and conclusions that these friends are offering, bothered Job more than before they came and visited him. Alam niyo yun, lumala pa eh. Down na nga, tinapakan mo pa. And, and this book of Job is a very long book. It has 42 chapters. Imagine from chapter 3 to chapter 37, yan lang pinagdedebate nila. Of them telling Job na ito, 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 mga ginawa mong mali. And of Job defending himself. Sorry. To them. How would you feel? And they were supposed to be there to comfort him. So be careful who you ask for, for advice. And on the other hand, be careful also if you're the one giving advice. 
And so throughout this this 34 chapters and in, in, in between these these friends were accusing him of all kinds of things and in his in his defense job holds fast to two things that he believes in okay one he is innocent and that there is no hidden sin in his life there's no major thing that i have done wrong for which i am being punished sabi niya and then the other thing is that he was sure of is god is present and is sovereign and that his ways are above man's ways okay pero this this second idea hindi sobrang sobrang klaro sa kanya nung umpisa unti-unti na lang niya na realize as we go through the book so through through this part of the story he continues to believe and trust god he did not curse him like like satan said he would but all but all throughout the the debate, debates job had with his friends he begins to have, begins to have this this question sa, sa utak niya at, at unti-unti na naiisip at nako-consider niya perhaps god was treating me unfairly no naisip niya wala naman akong ginawang mali why are these things happening to me so he begins to ask and demand for an explanation from god he desperately want to know the reason God, why did you allow me to suffer like this? Sabi na, yes, I submit to you. Yes, I put my hopes in you. But I really, really want to argue my ways before you. Gusto niyang mga tuiran. What did I do to deserve this? Why are you treating me like I'm your enemy? Bakit ang tahitahimik mo? God. And that became a problem for Job. Job's greatest struggle is why. Why, Lord, why? He kept asking why. And that became his greatest temptation. What kind of God do I serve? And he doesn't even tell me why. Don't get me wrong, okay? He never doubted the existence of God. He never cursed God or blamed God. So Satan did not win. But he began insisting on his own righteousness and his merits. Minsan di natin napapansin, but we do this a lot. Look at this. He then started speaking of all the good he did. Sabi niya, I was honored by everyone in town. When I spoke, everyone listened. People who knew me spoke well of me. My reputation went ahead of me. I was known for being fair. I was the eyes to the blind. The dying blessed me and the bereaved were cheered by my visits. When I smiled, their faces lit up. I was their leader. Where I led, they followed. And then God has no right to treat me like this. It isn't fair. If I knew where on earth to find him, I'd go straight to him and plead my case face to face. Ang humble, di ba? And that's always our problem, isn't it? We think we are so good, pero compared to whom? Other people? Is God's standards other people? Ano nakikita natin problema dito? Self-righteousness. I did this, so I deserve that. Actually, very similar nga sa thinking ng mga kaibigan niya. Tingnan niyo yung hinighlight ko. Puro I, me, my, I did this, I did that. Tapos he even started to demand an audience kay God. Later on, there's a fourth friend na sumali din sa conversation and he pointed this out to Job. Na yung problema niya is actually pride and, and self-righteousness. Pero in the end, all of these, these friends, none of them were, were able to understand and accept that God does not simply react to human behaviors and actions. What God does is not dependent on what we do. No? Sufferings are not necessarily a punishment, while blessings are not necessarily rewards. Okay? So now, as we follow the story of Job uh, from last week to this week, we see a major spiritual development in his life. Because of his physical suffering 
And then because he has to defend himself in front of his friends. And all of this is leading up to this greatest spiritual crisis. At ano yun? It's facing God in person. Now, nakikita natin lagi yung sa mga palabas na tong, tong sin na to, di ba? Yung character is talking about the boss or yung tatay or yung bully or whatever. I, I, kung nandito lang yung taong yan, I would, you know, I will, you know what I will do? I will tell him how it is. I would show him. I wouldn't be afraid of him. Kung nandito lang siya at ito, ito, ito gagawin ko. Ang dami pang sinasabi. Pero hindi niya alam na katayo lang pala sa likod niya yung taong yun. Alam niya yun? Laging may ganyang scene, di ba, sa mga palabas. And then you go, oo, yari na. So, this kind of happens here. Job was saying, if I could just be in, in front of God, if there could just be a trial for my innocence, I can argue my ways before him. So I can prove to him that I don't deserve this. So hindi mapakali si Job. He kept asking why and he had all these reasons. Then all of the sudden, sabi sa Bible, God showed up. Ayan na. And now finally, God answered Job from from the eye of a violent storm. Boo! <laughs> May imagine na yun? And he said, why do you confuse the issue? Why do you talk without knowing what you're talking about? Pull yourself together, Job. Up on your feet. Stand tall. Because I have some questions for you. And I want some straight answers. So God began speaking to Job. Who are you to keep asking me these questions? And he is now turning the tables on Job. Ngayon, tumayo ka dyan. Because it's my turn to ask you questions. Where were you when I created the earth? Nasaan ka pala nun? Sabihin mo sa akin. Since ang dami mong alam. Nakikita nyo? Hindi naging defensive si God. In fact, he didn't even attempt to answer anything or explain himself. Instead, he asked Job a question. And it really isn't so much of a question than it is a statement. Nakita mo yung earth? Who decided on its size? Certainly you'll know that. Who came up with the blueprints and the measurements? So he started with this and, and over the next couple of chapters, God began to ask Job simple questions about creation. Job, explain mo sa akin, how big is our planet? How does the sun rise up in the morning? Job, explain to me the constellations. Explain to me the stars. Job, ano ba? Explain mo nga sa akin. Alam mo anong ginawa ni Job? Job could not answer the question of God. Ano sagot ni God sa kanya? Job, you cannot even understand my creation. How much more can you, under can you understand the moral order of the universe? You don't even know simple things. Snow, where did it come from? So God is saying, Job, you weren't the one who created everything. I did. You can begin to understand how everything in existence works so you're not in a position to judge my purposes. Alam niyo, it's human nature for us to think that we know more than we actually do. And because, that, because of that, we lose our sense of perspective with God. Kaya even when, when we keep hearing verses like, in all things, God create, works together, uh, works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Tapos you see shootings in school, we, shoot, we see a child with cancer die, and you still say, ay, ano ba to? How can God allow this? How can we see any, any good here? Well, just because you cannot see, you cannot see it, ibig ba sabihin nun, there's no good that can come from it? 
many times when we see an instant instance of, of evil and injustice, we rush to judge the creator who allowed it. Because our human eyes cannot see the infinity of factors na siya lang ang nakakaintindi at siya lang ang nakakakita. We are ignorant of the ways in which he was he is working everything together for the ultimate good. Alam niyo yung butterfly effect? Sabi nila the flapping of a butterfly's wings in one part of the world could spark and cascade a series of events that could could cause a hurricane on the other side of the globe. It's like that. Only with God, only that there are no coincidences with God. There's not a single flap of a butterfly's wings that he is not in control of. We are all so consumed by our own little worlds that we forget that he is the creator, the grand weaver of all time, matter, and space. Alam nyo, let me tell you this. If tonight or through any of this Bible series sessions, you feel like God is personally talking to you, Sipin niyo to. Almost 20 years ago, my family migrated to the States. Left me alone here. Alone. No other time in my life have I ever asked the question, why? More than that time. But this sad event also prompted a series of events that eventually landed me here in this organization. Landed grace here. Had any of this series of events changed like I asked God for so many times, we would not be talking here. We wouldn't even know each other today. The Grand Weaver. So pain and suffering can actually result in good ends. I know, at least for me, if everything went up my way, it would not end well. Because I am finite. But God is infinite. Hindi ko na nga matandaan ano nangyari kahapon eh. Hindi ko rin alam ano mangyayari bukas. A tragedy like a young child dying today can set forth a series of ripples that can actually cause a great evangelist that brings a million people to the Lord 500 years from now. Or it could cause the person who eventually will find the cure for cancer. We can see that. But God can. We are finite. But God is infinite. Okay, when we talk about injustice, Hindi bang injustice is actually on our part to presume that we know enough to question his judgment? Now, hindi pa tapos si God doon. Meron pa. Yari talaga to si Job. Kanina, he was asking Job to explain the simple inanimate things of the universe. No? The earth, the sun, the stars. Ngayon, parang inulit niya ulit. But this time, he was asking him to explain the creatures of the world. So nagtanong na naman siya. Job, I have some more questions for you. And I want straight answers. Do you presume to tell me that what I'm doing is wrong? Are you calling me a sinner so you can be a saint? Will you condemn me? So you may be justified. So God says to Job, Ngayon, tanongin kita ulit. Since you are trying to justify yourself by doubting my actions, now explain to me the Leviathan. Explain to me the Hippopotamus. Explain to me how strong they are. Explain to me how the horse can run so fast. 
Alam niyo yun? Let me show you some of what God proceeded to ask Job. No? Medyo mahaba-haba, so I'll just show you some. Just so you have the mental image of what's happening. Okay? Job, sabihin mo sa akin, how can the rooster predict the weather? How does the lioness always find food for the young? How do you know what month the mount, mountain goat gives birth? How many months is she pregnant? The ostrich has beautiful wings but is useless. Bakit? Who do you think set the wild donkeys free? Why can't you use the wild buffalo para magsaka? How can the hawk walk fly effortlessly against the wind? Who taught the eagle to build her nest in the heights? Na-imagine nyo kung ikaw to? God! Ba't mo naman ako hinayaang matapilok? Ang sakit to. Tapos ito yung sasagot sa'yo. Anong mararamdaman mo? This is God reminding Job how small he is compared to him. You who question God's method, you who question God's intention, you who questions God's justice, can you answer God now he is asking these questions to you? In other words, if you are wise enough to contest my decisions, kung gusto mong mga tuwiran, if you are wise enough to debate with me, God, about what's happening to you, surely you are wise enough to answer these basic questions. Ngayon, ba't di mo alam yung sagot? Kasi if you have the answers to these questions, then perhaps you have the answer to the other questions that we, we, you want to ask me. So why is God pointing this out to Job? Parang power trip lang ba ito ni God? No, of course not. God deeply and desperately loves Job. Kaya He is pointing this out to him. Na napakaliit niya. Because until ma-realize na yun, and by extension, until ma-realize natin yun, we won't be able to fully see the greatness of God, which is the only greatness we will all ever need. Kung nagtataka kayo, ba't may squirrel, nagtataka din ako. <laughs> Kasi naghanap ako ng picture kung anong, maging, anong itsura ni Job nung sinabi ni God lahat sa kanya yan. Eh, kaya ito yun. No? Yan yung nahanap ko. Ngayon, gusto nyo ba malaman kung ano yung Sagot ni Job after all of this. Job answered, I'm speechless. In awe, words fail me. I should never have opened my mouth. I talk too much, way too much. I'm ready to shut up and listen. Only then did Job realize how insignificant he really is in the grand scheme of things. Ang dami-daming sinabi ni Job. And then God shows up. And then everything changes. This big question of why is now totally eclipsed by the awesome majesty of who. If today... You have all these questions kay God. God, bakit naman ganyan? Bakit may sakit yung asawa ko? Bakit may sakit yung anak ko? Bakit nalugi ako dito? Bakit ang pangit ko? Today, we must realize where we stand in relation to God. Which is why He is reminding us through Job of who He is and who we are not. Because even when you don't get the answer you are looking for, remember that what you are saying now is a tiny, tiny fraction of, a whole, of the whole picture that, that God sees and is sovereign over. His wisdom and power go beyond anything we could ever imagine. Always remember this. Screenshot mo to if you need to. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways. Your ways, my ways declares the Lord. 
For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. If you've ever judged God for his decisions, his will, ask him for forgiveness today and ask for a heart of humility that recognizes who he is and who you are. Because what's true for Job is true for all of us as well. Until every shred of pride, every self-righteous thought in our mind is stripped away, we can never, never see the fullness of God's greatness and love. So balik tayo. After God said all of this, we now finally see Job's confession and repentance. Ano na-realize niya in all of this? Sabi niya, I'm convinced you can do anything and everything. Nothing and no one can upset your plans. You ask, who is this muddying the waters? Ignorantly confusing the issue. Second guessing my purposes. I admit it. I was the one. I babbled on about things far beyond me. Made small talk about wonders way over my head. In other words, I have said too much. I admit. Mali ako. Ang dami kong sinabi na hindi ko dapat sinabi. Things I know nothing about. Things too wonderful for me. Which I do not know about. I admit I once lived by rumors of you. Now I have it all firsthand from my own eyes and ears. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I'll never do that again, I promise. I'll never again live on the cross of hearsay, crumbs of rumor. In other versions, I retract. I repent. So, binawi na. What was he repenting from? Job said, my problem, my sin, is I step forward thinking that I could engage you as an equal. At ngayon, I'm sorry. I step back. I retract my questions. Nahiya ako that I even think of questioning you. Job's error was that he judged God's actions and intentions without even, even seeing God's point of view at the very least. Kasi among other things, he also did not have God's wisdom. He did not have God's power or knowledge. He didn't have all of those and yet he doubted God's reasons. Kaya Job said, forgive me. And this is very good, no? How he really, truly repented. Alam niyo, sometimes when we say sorry and, and repent to God or to other people for that matter, sasabihin natin, okay, sorry na, sorry na. Parang so, so, so just we can move on. But that's just to get stuff over with. And we do that a lot, no? When we pray, Lord, we are sorry. Please forgive us for all the sins that we have done. Kung ako si God, uh, which sin are we talking about here? Yung sinilipan mo yung kapitbahay mo? O yung niluto mo yung manok niya? Real repentance is the recognition of the wrong that has been done. Meron ba dito sinasabi nyo sa asawa nyo o sa nanay nyo, I'm sorry for every sin that I have done against you today. Meron ba? Wala. So why do you do that with God? Between two friends or sa mga mag-asawa, you say, I recognize and I'm sorry that I spoke harshly to you without cause. Please forgive me. Diba? That's repentance. Hindi yung, ah, uh, alam ko ang dami kong ginawang mali. Huwag na natin aksayahin ng, 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 ng panahon para ilista isa-isa. Basta sorry na lang para sa lahat. Tama ba yun? 
No. At pansin ninyo that Job did this before there is any change in his situation. He repents because he is wrong. And not simply in order to get something back. Alam niyo yun? To have his health back or his wealth restored para magbati na kayo. So there is no bargaining going on here. Okay, if I if I repent, I, I will repent if you would just give me back my stuff. Para maayos na lahat, para bumalik na tayo sa dati. Anong value nun? Meron ba? Wala. Job is repenting because he is wrong. Period. Whether he gets his wealth back or his health back or he drops dead in the next two minutes makes no difference. True repentance does not have any condition attached to it. Okay? Now look at the first part of the verse. I admit I once lived by rumors of you. Now I have it firsthand from my eyes, my own eyes and ears. So I used to hear about you, but now my eyes see you. In other words, what Job said is, is from what I have heard before, I know enough to trust you. But now, I really, really know you. The greatest blessing of Job at the end of all of this is he became intimate with God. And this intimacy only came in the midst of suffering. Gusto ko lang makita, okay? How many people in here came to faith or became closer to God through some kind of pain and suffering? Say me in the chat. Okay? Go. See? C.S. Lewis says, God whispers to us in our pleasures, speaks in our conscience, but shouts in our pain. It is his megaphone to rouse a deaf world. Pain is God's megaphone to arouse a morally deaf world. I've heard of a testimony of a, of a girl who suffered an autoimmune disease and because of this she became blind for four months. Alam niyo ano sabi niya? It was during this time when she became closest to the Lord. It was during this time that she learned the most about God. Intimacy with God brings comfort. And that is something you will not fully understand until you go through it. People are allowed to suffer so that they may see God for who He is and see themselves for who they are. So, wag kang matakot. Please, please, don't come out of this saying, ayaw ko na maging mabait kasi baka matulad ako ni Job. Okay? That's missing the point. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whether you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. So can pain and suffering be a blessing? Yes, definitely. In fact, mas matakot ka nga if you go through life without any sort of testing and discipline from God. Okay, so let's, we come now to the last part of the story of Job. Okay? Tingnan natin how it all ends. Uh, let me call another friend. Uh, Roxy, are you there? Yes. Can you Good read? Evening. Good evening. After the Lord had said these things to Job, he said to Eliphaz the Temanite, 
I am angry with you and your two friends because you have not spoken the truth about me as my servant Job has. So now take seven bulls and seven rams and go to my servant Job and sacrifice a burnt offering for yourselves. My servant Job will pray for you and I will accept his prayer. In the book of Job, uh, chapter 42. Oh, metaphor. And not deal with you according to your folly. You have not spoken the truth about me as my servant Job has. Um, sorry, umulit ba? Yes, um, I am. So Eliphaz, the Temanite, Bildad, and Shunit. Shunit? And Zophar. Zophar. And Zophar. The Namatite did what the Lord told them, and the Lord accepted Job's prayer. After Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes and gave him twice as much as he had before. Okay, thank you, Roxy. Uh, so at the end of the story, God vindicated Job. Paano? Sinabihan na yung mga kaibigan niya that you were talking non nonsense about me. Ngayon, bumalik kayo kay Job and he will pray for you. At nakinig naman sila. These three friends did what the Lord commanded and God accepted Job's prayer. Diba? How is that for vindication? These, three, these, these friends of his came to Job in judgment. They believed that they were so right. They believed that, and they believed that this gave them a license to pronounce judgment on Job. Pero alam natin that judgment only belongs to God, not to men, di ba? And you see yung mga teachings ni Jesus, um, like forgive your enemies, pray for them. We see these things at work here between Job and his friends. He has to forgive them and he has to pray for them in order for his own restoration to be complete. God restored their relationship as friends through repentance and forgiveness. And this is part of our lives too, isn't it? When we are in conflict with someone, we have to, we also have to pray. We also have to reconcile with these people if we ourselves are to be restored in the right place with God. Now, after doing all of this, the next thing we see that happens in Job's life is his own life is restored. The Lord bless the latter days of Job more than the, his beginning. He had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, and 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 female donkeys. He had seven sons and three daughters. After the, this, Job lived 140 years and saw his sons and his grandsons, four generations, and Job died, an old man, full of days. So is this a happy ending? Yes. I'm sure this would satisfy our desires for a happy ending. At first glance, this may look like a reward for his enduring faith. But let's think again. No? The Apostle Paul, one of the most faithful servants of God, suffered and suffered. And there was no happy ending. In fact, he was beheaded in the end. He did not get another 40 years to preach the gospel. So what I want you to realize does, is that this was not done as a reward. Since si Job, yes, perhaps he was not guilty of cursing God, pero nakita natin he was guilty of pride and all sorts of presumptions about God's motives even to the point of challenging his ways. His sin, basically, is self-righteousness. Alam ko, inosente ako. Alam ko, wala akong ginawang mali. Ito ginawa ko, ito ginawa ko. So I don't deserve this. Alam niyo? So pag pinag-uusapan natin ay reward, there's no reward that, that was actually due to him for his failing in this way. In the end, the blessings that he got after 
all of this is not a reward in the same way that what happened to him in the beginning is not a punishment. No? So ano to? So the, this restoration was more of a, a gift. God in his infinite wisdom and reason restored what was taken away. Do we know exactly why? But that's the lesson this past couple of weeks. Diba? We, we don't need to know why. Both in the good and the bad. But one thing that this gift does, I think, is it demonstrates God's continued attention to his servants before, during, and after a crisis in their lives. Di ba nangyayari sa atin yan? Sabi natin kanina, when we have a crisis in our life, that's when we draw closer, closer to God. We pray to him and our prayers became become so so intense, so deep. Kasi nangangailangan tayo. Because we are suffering. And then eventually there's a break or an end to our problems. Our health improves or our situation gets better or we get the answers we're lo- looking for or whatever. That was all of the sudden the intensity is gone. And we go back to the way we were before. Pumalik din tayo sa dati. Ganun nangyayari, di ba? And I think what we see here is yes, God is with us during normal times as well as crisis moments. But what we overlook most of the time is that he remains with us after the crisis. After things come back to normal. He is still there. Sometimes we forget that. He is still requiring our attention, our adoration, our faith. Tandaan nyo, Job is still called to have faith even after all of this. Because even though he has survived the crisis and having this, this face-to-face encounter with God, the Lord still hasn't revealed to Job the reason for all of his suffering. Hindi pa din niya alam. Naalala niyo yung challenge ni Satan? That Job would curse God if he lost his family and material wealth? Job doesn't know any of this. Tapos na tayo sa story and yet this was never revealed to him. So kailangan pa din niyang tanggapin ito by faith. Yes, binigkan nga siya ng bagong anak. Pero any parent will tell you a new baby will never replace a dead child. So part of Job's repentance despite the, despite the renewal of his family and his wealth and health and honor is that he must still trust God and live every day by faith. The lesson of this crisis is that we must, eat, we must live each day by faith. Your life, like Job's life, is not lived based on wisdom and understanding. Your life is to be lived by faith. Whether you are in a crisis or you are in peace, your life is lived always, always on the basis of faith. In this world, it does not matter who you are, suffering will come. Pero alam nyo? And I am not taking this lightly, no? All our trials, all our pain and suffering, all of it will be forgotten when Jesus comes. Alam niyo? Lahat ng iniisip natin, all the situations that you worry about, yung mga posibleng mangyari in the future that you dread, the things that happened in the past that you regret, 
at yung mga nangyayari ngayon that you are worrying about. All those things, when Jesus comes, they will all be forgotten. Sabi sa Isaiah, see, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I will create. For I will create Jerusalem to be a delight and its people a joy. So heaven will not be for remembering, but it will be for rejoicing. So our task now is to stand fast in faith. Not try to figure everything out or to measure God's justice para alam natin kung yung nangyayari sa atin is fair or not fair. Don't be anxious about what comes next. Look at this promise, 1 Corinthians 15. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. So from the state of death and sleep, or from a normal life, live faithfully, or from the middle of some crisis na ang magagawa mo na lang is to hold on to God while everything is whirling around you. From one of these states, in a twinkling of an eye, will be transformed into a new creature with a body fit for an eternal and joyful experience in the presence of God. Never to sin, never to remember, never to regret, ever, ever again. This is the true and living hope that all Christians have, no matter what condition they find themselves in at the present time. Alam niyo, this would have been the answer to Job's question, had he known what we know in Christ Jesus. The answer to Job, one day, Job, one day, in a twinkling of an eye, it will all change. It will all be well. All the trials, all the sorrows, will no longer have memory. It will all be forgotten. We will have no interest in knowing anything of the past. We will only be interested in knowing in rejoicing in eternity with Jesus. And so praise God. And all glory to Christ through the spirit of this wonderful promise. Para sa ating lahat. Amen. When peace like a river attendeth my way When sorrows like sea billows roll